Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the English News from Djibouti channel. We are our headlines of our news today. The main titles are the President of the Republic, the Excellency Mr. Ismail Margila, received the letter, presidential letters uh, from the Embassy of Japan. On continental news, more than 50 million cases detected uh, in the worldwide. The President of the Republic, His Excellency Mr. Ismail Omar Gilly, received today morning at an official ceremony held at the Palace of the Republic the letter of credence of the new Ambassador Extraordinary of Japan to the Republic of Djibouti. In an address made during the presentation of his letter of credence to the President of the Republic, Mr. Ismail Omergele, the new Japanese ambassador, stated his motivation and enthusiasm to work for the straining of the already privileged relation between the two countries and the two brotherly uh, people. Uh, the head of state of Djibouti also met uh, with the new ambassador and first of all welcomed Japanese new representative to our country. He said he was uh, sure that everything will be done to ensure that you carry out your mission uh, to the best of your ability. Concernant votre soutien résolu aux forces d'autodéfense japonaises présentes sur le sol djiboutien, le Japon continuera à leur déploiement pour promouvoir un espace indo-pacifique libre et ouvert. Par ailleurs, je me réjouis de nos relations de confiance renforcées par la coopération que nous menons afin de promouvoir le développement socio-économique de Djibouti. En plus, je suis pleinement prêt à œuvrer de mon mieux afin de renforcer le lien économique qu'on proposait dans la TICA 7 qui met le business au centre du développement. And after the president of the republic received the letter of credence of the new ambassador of Japan, uh, they discuss uh, the bilateral relations uh, between the uh, two uh, countries. Under the aegis of uh, the Prime Minister, uh, Mr. Abdul Qadir Kamil Mohammed, uh, today organized the Forum of uh, I Conference in the partnership with the Tanjimed. Uh, the uh, more uh, than 350 uh, professionals, including a major uh, player in the sector, transport operator, engineering, and design firms, bank, insurance uh, companies, and private inf investor uh, took uh, part at uh, the uh, ceremony. Uh, this uh, forum this year uh, is uh, marked by the COVID-19 pandemic, which according to the World Bank will uh, push the world economy to contract uh, by a four point two. 4.2 uh, billion dollars uh, between uh, 2019 and 2020 with all that this implies in terms of repercussions of the activities of the world and african uh, ports uh, the objective is to lay the foundations for a forward looking approach uh, by focusing on the impact of the uh, COVID-19 uh, crisis on maritime activity and the best uh, uh, scenarios uh, that will open up opportunities uh, for African poor actors to emerge 
uh, from this crisis and on the other hand on the challenges of African Port Alliance and the need to straighten partnership uh, uh, these two days will be an opportunity to exchange uh, the uh, to debate on the development impact of uh, ports on the uh, and the land to find the best approach to improve their competitiveness and finally the crucial issue of uh, digitalizations uh, the president of the authority poor uh, mr Aubakar omar had distressed the importance of the africa forum and he said according to the recent figures released by ANCTAD, the world seaborne trade represents 90 percent of the global trade by volume and 90 percent on value africa has a heavy reliance on shipping ports for its intercontinental trading with one third of the african countries long linked to no say landlocked coastal countries have a and even more critical responsibilities to serve these countries. With Africa, trade represents only 2.7% of the global trade. The continent contributes to a higher share of the world seaborne trade, with 7% for export and 5% for import. Connecting more African countries to the global trade will, will, will further increase that share. Connecting more African countries to the global trade will further. However, the internet transportation network need to be a support this effort. Land-based land -based infrastructure, road and railway remain the physical barriers to a more enhanced integration and continuity in the continent. Over the past couple of decades, Djibouti has implemented several ambitious infrastructures projects to meet ever increasing demand in the region. Djibouti is set at the cross, cross, crossroad of the three continents and is located at, uh, along two of the world trade routes in the world. Furthermore, as the international shipping industry carries about 90% of the world trade, Djibouti has a special responsibility to provide access to the sea to its neighbors, many of which are landlocked, and thereby connect them to the global market. The Minister of Transport say that the forum is an opportunity that our continent offers to investors. It's a great pleasure, privilege and opportunity for me to participate and give a keynote speech in this year's edition of the African Post Forum on behalf of the Minister of Transport of Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia. Greetings from the land of origins. I would like to thank the government of the Republic of Djibouti for the great hospitality being provided and of course my appreciation will go to the organizers for this excellent event for their immense contribution to bring all logistics and port management actors of the continent together in this beautiful venue. I believe this kind of forum would rapidly fasten the 2063 integration agenda of the African Union as it paves the way to eff effectively utilize our common resources for a, sporous, for a prosperous future. Ethiopia, at the seat of the African Union and as one of the founding member states, is committed to realize this integration agenda through supporting and participating in infrastructure development and utilization levels, such as common utilization of poor facilities and the continent. In addition to the infrastructure-related integration of strategies, utilization of additional poor facilities through corridor development, 
schemes could hopefully benefit the continent. As you all are aware, the global COVID-19 pandemic had impacted the logistics sector significantly as porters, shippers, suppliers and importers have not been able to provide services in full scale. Despite the pandemic's worst to worst, the government of Ethiopia and Djibouti have implemented different in interventions to, con to control the spread of the virus, which helped the smooth delivery of medical items, foods, and industrial products from the origin to their destinations. The, main, uh, the Prime Minister said that the main objective of the forum is to improve the performance of our ports. Durant les deux jours, nous serons donné l'opportunité de pays pour ce remarquable événement n'est certainement pas fortuite. It is interesting to note that our country's selection for this remarkable event is certainly not virtuous. Indeed, Djibouti, by virtue of its positions on the world's maritime routes, embodies a central role in inter-African and international trade. This forum comes a few months after the official launch of the mega-projects following the commissioning of the port of Durali, Tajora, as well as the international free zone of PK-23. Our country is, therefore, naturally gravitated by the holding of this second edition of the Women's Forum, which sees the active participation of a large number of port experts, several nationalities and other high-level entrepreneurs, whose common denominator is to agree on how to develop approaches to improve the performance and efficiency of our ports. This can only be achieved by pulling our expertise through privileged port cooperation between African countries in order to develop strategies specific to our specificities and interests. The meeting held in July 2019, which was a great success, certainly marked an important turning point in the reflections carried out to provide our continent with ports that are equal to the ambitions of our states. These profound reflections have allowed, among other things, to highlight the historical evolution of port conditions and the failures that marked the 90s and 2000s. This period, from which we have learned some very interesting lessons, was illustrated by an imbalance of partnerships between emerging countries, whose economy is not yet consolidated on the one hand and partners imposing their own drastic conditions on the other. In conclusion, several African countries, including the Republic of Djibouti, have suffered greatly from the disastrous concessions resulting from this imbalance of power. For our country, this episode now belongs to a bygone era. The Minister of Transport said that, that uh, this uh, forum uh, is uh, an opportunity uh, to, uh, uh, to fight against uh, the COVID-19. During the two days, we will give the opportunity to discuss and consolidate what we initiated last year, but also, as usual, with an analytical spirit to find the best way to build on the opportunities that our continent offers to investors, particularly in the field of the transport chain as a whole. Let me remind you that in this third millennium, Africa is lagging behind in a good number of promising sectors in terms of development. However, the African port sector has benefited from tens of billions of dollars of investment in less than two decades, thus increasing maritime traffic by more than seven times, with trade volumes quadrupling during the same period. This is reflected in the political vision of governments who have felt that the development of the sector depends on the support provided by their governments. It is translated in Djibouti by a vision of a man who from the outset saw bright perspectives for his country. All the decisions taken to develop the port sector and all the activities revolving around it are to the credit of the President of the Republic, His Excellency Mr. Ismail Omar Gelli. The said years of hard work have been followed by a resounding success which has allowed the development of the ports and its industry and all the companies which benefited from this booming sector. The current projects reflect the good health and confidence in the port system that has been put in place. We have invested massively in infrastructures and have made the development of our logistics platforms a priority. In addition to this, our ambition is to become an international maritime hub, providing all services related to logistics, transport of unloading, salvage, ship repair and crew changes. The Minister of the Interior, Mr. Mumin Ahmed Sheikh, visited the new headquarters of the National Office uh, for Assistance to Refugees 
and disaster victims uh, owners uh, located at Pika 13. The minister uh, was accompanied by the executive secretary of uh, owners, uh, Hussein Hassan Darar, and the UNHCR representative in Djibouti. Uh, more than uh, two more than 12 more than 12 uh, thousand meter square of surface area and several buildings uh, that will host uh, brand new offices and meeting room as well as she's, uh, sheets uh, as vast uh, and the food and non food time that are essential at all times to relieve the refugees and disaster stricken population in our country. Thanks to uh, fi the funding uh, from the European Union, uh, from the funds of the project for sustainable solutions for refugees and host communities impl implemented by the International Organization for Migration. Owners uh, entrusted uh, this huge project uh, to uh, a Chinese company that has put uh, the, the little things into the big ones. Uh, work on the side is uh, progressing at a very high speed, which pleasantly surprised the minister and the official. Chinese engineers and site manager offered a guide tours to the minister and officials who appreciated uh, all the achievement. The Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, Mr. Mahmoud uh, Ali Yusuf, and the French Ambassador to Djibouti, uh, Mr. Arnaud, uh, today launched the decentralization corporations uh, between the Republic of Djibouti and the uh, province Alpes Côte d'Azur region. Uh, this uh, through uh, virtual missions. The Secretary of State in charge of decentralization, um, Mr. Hamadou Mohamed Aramis, and the Mayor of Djibouti, who is also President of the National Association of Territorial Communities, uh, Mrs. Fatuma uh, Awale Osman, took part in the meeting alongside the head of diplomacy. On the French side, the Director General of Services, Mr. Uh, Frank and others uh, personality and officials uh, took a part in the virtual meeting uh, the french ambassador was also accompanied by his clo closet uh, closest collaborators the uh, general zakaria sheikh ibrahim chief of uh, the staff of the army uh, force received uh, in the meeting room of Sheikh Osman Khan this morning, the new military attaché in Djibouti of the uh, People's Republic of, Ch of China, uh, Colonel uh, Zhang Jiu. Uh, this court visit is part of his contact with the country's uh, military authorities. Uh, during his meeting, uh, General uh, Zakaria Sheikh Ibrahim was assisted by General Tahir Ali. Uh, chief of the defense staff and uh, the assistant of the director of international relations. In his speech, uh, the general Zakir Sheikh Ibrahim said that the defense attaché is the strategic uh, bridge linking the, the two armies. Uh, the general did not fail to highlight the strategic relations between the Chinese army and the Djibouti army forces. Recall that the excellent cooperation uh, between the two armies through the training of the military and stress he uh, the uh, importance to work further to consolidate uh, these uh, fraternal ties. And now let's move on continental news. The figures uh, are constantly increasing this Sunday, according to account carried out by AFP. More than 50 million cases of coronavirus have been officially detected worldwide since uh, the start of the pandemic at the end of 2019. Figures are terrible. Precisely 50,010,400 cases, including 1,251,980 deaths, have been recorded worldwide since the start of the new coronavirus pandemic in China in December 2019. This is the assessment drawn up this Sunday by AFP, which is based on figures provided by the authorities. The increase in the number of cases detected can only be explained in part by the increase in the number of tests carried out in many countries, particularly in Europe and the United States. 
are facing a major new wave of contamination, the news agency said. The United States remains the most affected country in terms of mortality, with nearly 240,000 deaths, followed by Brazil, India, Mexico, and the United Kingdom. Here we arrive at the end of this news edition. Thank you for watching us. Goodbye.